Hey man, skip your next class, and come and join me in Networking 101. You know, we hear about them all the time, but what is a botnet actually? What does that do? How do they become a net? You know, well, what is a bot? Well, you know, hacking has changed just like networking changes. Everything evolves, right? And when it comes to information, uh, you know, the old saying is true. Information is really the only commodity worth owning. Um, so how do you get that information? What is the best way to do it? You know, only a goober is going to do a full frontal and attack a firewall uh, from the inside of, uh, to, to a big corporation and stuff. That, that dog doesn't hunt, right? But I want that data, right? There's some good stuff here, man. That's, there's some big money here if I can grab that data and steal it, you know? So how do I do it? Well, come up with a pretty cool way of actually, instead of sitting there hacking that stuff, I need to absolve myself of responsibilities, right? Um, and a way I can do that is, is write a really small piece of code that has a very defined purpose, right? Just like an ASIC, you know, if I'm building a switch, I build a switch to have a chip that has a very application specific type of functionality. Well, bots are very much the same way. I can take a, a piece of code and I can say, okay, this botnet here is uh, really small, very lightweight, very, very low processor stuff. It's only going to do a couple things. It's going to capture keyboard strokes, and it's going to be capable of doing um, DDoS attacks. That's it. That's the only thing it's going to do. And typically, those are two very higher-end functions. You may not even see those ever grouped together. Um, and we're going to uh, install that because one of the questions I get all the time, actually, is talking to the crew. And they're like, well, but if you have a firewall here, you know, how are they getting past that firewall? Well, the trick is, is I want somebody to bring that inside. And sometimes that can be attached to a, to a website. It could be something they want to download. Um, it can be some kind of vulnerability uh, of some sort that's going to allow me to get that inside of this network, and it's going to look very passive, right? So it's going to install on one of my client machines out there, and this is going to kind of transparently put itself on here, and bloop, that machine's going to take it in, and then it's going to typically do one function. It's going to install itself, and then it's going to go quiet, and it's going to send out a command, and it's going to basically send it out to another control server, and it's just going to say, you know, basically, you know, I'm ready. And that's it. And that could be really any type of string of commands. It could be anything. It could be very innocuous, but something that that controller needs, because in any type of botnet um, out there today, what you're looking at is, is that you've got your bot, and then you got your CNC, my command and control center up here. In all my bots, I'll just to, to shorten it out for the sake of time, I'll just use Bs. They report up to my command and control console no matter where that's at. And they can, and I can have thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of these things everywhere. And what makes it great is that instead of actually, you know, uh, uh, doing a full front on a corporate network, since we have a whole lot of good old broadband available at the house, and like my grandmother's running this, well, how good do you think her firewall is? Mm, you know, uh, probably not as good as I'd hope it'd be. Uh, but since we got a whole lot of, lot of that stuff out there, there's a, it's a target-rich environment, as we like to call it in the hacking community. There's a lot of places to install these bots everywhere. Now, do these hackers really care about granny, getting uh, granny's um, uh, you know, peanut butter cookie recipe? No. What they do want is her CPU cycles, because on those CPU cycles, maybe I can do things like send down a password file and have her machine part of this network that helps crack it, right? I can use this as like a grid, and I can say all these machines are going to work together to crack this one password file and get in. Then I can actually legally lock in, legally, legally log into the network I want to get in, steal the data I want. Maybe I get pretty mad at a corporation, and I, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty angry at Ewart's Productions, SJE Productions, because he just did a cool movie on um, uh, Ralph McQuarrie, and he didn't invite me to be in it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack his network, but I don't want to attack it from my house at Pleasant Prairie. He didn't know who it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm, i got my little botnet farm out here, and I've got them all over the world. And what I'm going to say is, hey, you guys at 10 o'clock, because I know he's at work, at 10 o'clock, I want you to go ahead 
and start sending down some denial service frames to his network and just send them down uh, just a, a little bit at a time. And while maybe one or two of these, maybe that won't be too much traffic, once I put the full force of maybe 200,000 of these in action, send him frames, that might equal, you know, 200 gigabits of data overloading his old firewall there. And guess who's going down for the count? That's right, exactly. And then who's going to be in your movie next, right? Hmm? Uh, but so one, one of the things is that that's what people are using these botnets for. That's where Granny's network comes in, right? They can do that. I don't want to send that stuff out to a corporate network. Are you kidding me? No, I'm going to actually use those to do my denial of service attack. And how do you shut them down? They're everywhere. They're on ISPs everywhere. How do you stop that? It's pretty darn tough, right? It requires some serious uh, security architecting on the back end to actually shunt these attacks off and really keep them down. But um, if it looks impossible, it's because it's, it's pretty darn tough. It's a big job. It's not impossible. Uh, it's tough. Um, and that's how these botnets works. They got they have a central command and control server, um, and a lot of these websites are up and down in just minutes. They're not they don't last long. You know, I mean, we're trading this data out. As a matter of fact, these are commodities. Um, we will sell these things out, um, kind of broker these. It's like it's like if somebody has a job, if I've got a, a hacker, if I got somebody out there that's mad, um, I don't have to be the one that's mad at somebody for writing a uh, somebody put a review out on uh, like Fallout, which I think is a great video game. And they said, oh, I hate Fallout, it's not that good. I'm like, oh, really? Well, let's go ahead and nuke them, you know. But that's not me, I don't really care. But if somebody thought that, they could rent out my botnet farm, and I can say, I'll sell you 10,000 bots, you know, for this much money, and they can go out and do your dirty work for you. And it's fine, it's, it's a business, right? It's just business, it's, it's just business. Um, because that's what it's all about. Botnets are big money, they're big business, and there's a lot of very complex ways of setting this up. There's some bots out there that are coded by some of the most intelligent people I swear I've ever seen in my life. They are brilliant coders with encryption packages, with offloaders, with built-in reversers, with ways to stay silent, with mapping out networks, to knowing if they're on a corporate network or not. Um, There's some amazing, amazing technology out here. Uh, the most important thing to remember about them is never, ever, ever take them too lightly. They are serious, they are really big deals, and they work fantastic.